Right, so now we're going to wire up the uh, remote, remote enable uh, signal to this inverter for the new cell log um, low voltage disconnect controller. And it's just a matter of undoing uh, four screws at each end uh, and then the top half of this lid pops off and we can get access to the uh, remote control on off switch at the front there. Uh. Right, so we've uh, disconnected the positive from the battery pack, uh, taking the screws off and got the lid off and this is what it's, it's like inside. Um, I'd previously replaced the quite noisy fans with um, special low noise ones um, just to make the inverter a bit quieter. Um, there's my dust filters to keep the cat hair out of the machine. Um, it's a big problem down here. Um, and then uh, I've got the front of the unit off. Uh, there's another couple of screws at the bottom and then the, uh, the whole front panel just hinges down like that. And then you've got the remote uh, connector, uh, the on-off remote switch connects in here. Just three wires um, for the uh, remote on and um, centre position. Uh, and I think, just looking at it, it's probably this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, there's a brown wire in the centre, which is probably the uh, the common which I'm looking for. That's what I'll splice into as the enable. Right, so we've got the uh, remote connection in place now, spliced into that brown wire. Um, and let's give it a test. I've got the power supply back on. So now if I put the inverter into its uh, on position, uh, nothing happens. Um, so that means that it's impossible to actually turn the inverter on, even by the uh, normal override of the remote control. Um, neither position works because we've spliced into the common. So if I put it onto on and then we look at the cell log 8 controller um, it's not beeping so it's not showing any alarms and the LED inside is off um, so the uh, inverter is not enabled. And if I press the reset button for the latching relay on the side um, you see the re uh, the uh, light come on, the inverter is enabled, and the inverter springs into life. Um, so now uh, we can either turn the inverter off um, with the uh, normal switch, it's in the on position, so I can just turn it off, um, or uh, if any alarm that I program on this controller um, trips, uh, this light will go off, the inverter enable signal will be cancelled and uh, the inverter will shut down and stay shut down until someone comes along, investigates and presses the reset button. So that's our um, battery protection system. Um, I'm not too bothered about high voltage um, disconnect because we're undercharging the batteries by design. Um, we're charging to quite a low maximum voltage. Um, what is important is to make sure that under no circumstances uh, does the pack uh, or any one cell in the pack um, get below um, 3 volts, I've set it at, 3 volts per cell um, or 24 volts for the pack. Um, that's really important. Um, and the only load of any significance that I've got connected to the pack is the inverter. Um, Choosing a fairly high uh, low voltage cutoff point uh, means that I don't need to worry about um, the small parasitic loads like the cell log 8 itself, which is permanently connected to the pack, um, or the uh, other small parasitic loads such as uh, the smart gauge voltage meter uh, and indeed the charge controllers. Um, if I went away on holiday, 
um, I could um, throw the breaker on the uh, the main breaker on the the battery bank, and that would uh, disconnect the in inverter um, and all of the other um, charge controllers. It wouldn't con disconnect the smart gauge because that's permanently connected. But uh, I could uh, I could pull the fuse, which is just here. Um, I could pull the fuse on the smart gauge um, so that that didn't load the pack at all if we were away for quite a long time. Um, so that's that's our protection system and I'll probably just uh, give it a bit of a test by um, setting, resetting the alarms to um, some higher voltage um, uh, just as a, a final test. I've already tested last night uh, as you've seen on the video the unit in isolation uh, just using a test meter, continuity meter on its beep setting um, to show that the, the output works and is steady over its switching range which of course it is because the, uh, the relay latches so after the first trigger it ignores any other um, eccentricity of the alarm output switching uh, on and off. The only thing that is of slight concern is that the uh, alarm output um, has to be um, um, a short circuit as a output so the transistor has to switch on in order to indicate alarm and if for any reason the cell log 8 um, alarm output fails um, it crashes um, or the controller stops working uh, the latching relay will forever sit in its on position because it has to be um, actively pushed to the off state um, previously I had the thing set up just with a, a follower relay uh, and it was on in its um, uh, normally closed mode um, that is the transistor had to be driven to its on state um, in order to signal the um, inverter enable signal and it had to go to off uh, in its alarm state and this meant that if for any reason power failed within the cell log 8 um, the transistor would most likely um, of course switch off um, and then you have a fail safe mode where if the cell log 8 is uh, not powered on um, the inverter enable relay would automatically um, switch off and shut down the inverter um, this way the cell log 8 can fail um, and its output will not uh, go to short circuit um, and the inverter will quite happily sit there um, switched on none the wiser until the battery pack is depleted down to 21 volts when the LVD uh, that's built into the inverter uh, shuts it down um, whether uh, the battery pack would survive that um, depends on how balanced bottom balanced the cells were um, I might find that uh, one cell uh, packs up because the LVD for the pack voltage was too low and the pack wasn't uh, balanced enough to survive that. But uh, hopefully that won't happen. Um, we'll see.